Some causes of electrical shock include poor connections, bare cables, and wet conditions. It's important not to locate welding equipment in water or to stand in water while you're welding. Also, during operation, the area around the electrode can get extremely hot, as well as the metal that's being welded. In fact, it's good practice to treat all metal as if it is hot, so be careful to avoid burns while you're working. In addition, the welding process creates fumes. In some cases, these fumes can be poisonous. Fumes can originate from metals that have platings, coatings, or paint on them. Fumes can cause anything from nausea to more severe and lasting health problems. Another hazard associated with welding involves welding on containers such as barrels, tanks, or other vessels. It's important to determine whether a container has combustible or hazardous materials inside, or even residues of these materials. Such containers must be cleaned before any welding is performed, and they must be filled with water or an inert gas for additional safety. Also, if welding must be done from inside a container, there must be a replenishable source of clean air available. Other hazards that are only indirectly related to welding still pose a danger to your safety. For example, solvents that are sometimes used in preparing metal for welding can create fumes or cause chemical burns. They could also explode. Also, gas cylinders are sometimes used during welding to provide the gas that shields the weld zone. These cylinders can be a hazard. The shield gases themselves are non-flammable and non-explosive. However, a ruptured cylinder or a broken cylinder valve will release high pressure, launching the cylinder like a rocket. When you need to move a cylinder, be careful. First, make sure the safety cap is securely attached. Then, either use a cart or roll the cylinder along its bottom. When you're using a gas cylinder, it should be chained securely in place. Also, it's important to prevent exposing a gas cylinder to excessive heat. Be careful to avoid hanging an electrode holder near or on a gas cylinder. It's also important not to weld in areas containing gases, vapors, or dust where an explosion could result. Well, in this part, we went over quite a few hazards associated with arc welding. Some of them are fairly obvious, while others are rather subtle but equally dangerous. We also covered some hazards that are indirectly related to arc welding. Now would be a good time to check your understanding of this material. There are many methods of protection that welders can use to control the hazards associated with arc welding. For example, additional personnel may be assigned to work with the welder. In certain situations, it's a good practice to assign a fire watch. That's because there are several ways that a fire could be started during a welding job. Also, a fire can be started over a relatively large area. One reason why a separate fire watch is necessary is that the welder will be concentrating on the actual welding. Another reason is that the welder may not be able to see a fire because of the welding helmet being down. The fire watch may be the welder's helper, but regardless of who has the responsibility, the person must have access to a fire extinguisher and a fire alarm or a radio and must know how to use them. In situations where explosive or flammable vapors may be present, the air must be tested and certified to be free of hazards before welding begins. And in some situations, the air must be tested during welding to ensure that the air contains enough oxygen. Oxygen can be displaced from the air during welding by the fumes created by the welding process. Usually, a person specifically trained to perform atmospheric testing is assigned to this task.